Well, we're really excited to be joined by CJ Jones, who... <laughs> hello, 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 everyone. ...is clearly well-renowned. Um, for those of you who don't know, he is an actor, director, producer, writer, really a jack-of-all-trades in the entertainment industry, and you probably saw him recently in Baby Driver. So, CJ, I wanted to start just by asking you if you could talk a little bit about how you got started in the entertainment industry and, uh, and a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, um, let's see, I'll explain my background, so make sure I cover everything, okay? That's it, I'm done, <laughs> thank you. I'm just teasing, I'm just joking, okay. Anyway, um, really, I was born in St. Louis, Missouri, and my parents are deaf. Um, I was one of, uh, I had a really big family. I was the fourth one out of seven kids, so I've always loved acting. And um, inside, outside, school, I love to make people laugh. I was always a goofball. And my mom always told me, CJ, you're going to grow up to be a funny man. And so that's kind of stuck in my head. And really, um, my mom was right. So I grew up um, as I became an actor and a comedian. I love to work with people. I love to make people feel good. I love to empower people, you know? Be without them knowing it, I empower them. So I love to watch people grow and, you know, I've been doing this my whole life, so it's, it's a really simple thing that I love performing. And that's what gets me started to work and really be able to develop different things where I go to schools, uh, things out in the world, my one-man show. So I've done that for 40 years. I've traveled all over America and other countries um, all over the world. So I continue to do that, but always think about TV, movies, you know, I always wanted to do that, you know. And so now, boom, with Baby Driver, they came out and it just opened up a whole new world. That was good, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. You know, it's like um, the thinnest... Um, flimsiest, um, th th uh, little skim of my background. That's it. That's, that's the entire of my life condensed. <laughs> um, so CJ, you do all of these different things. What is your favorite medium? Um, what kind of medium? Like in like movies or TV, commercials? Like um, really, um, TV, um, I recently gave um, out from Boston. I did from um, Castle Rock, uh, so so it was um, last two weeks. So I was like, okay, oh, that's my favorite kind of work. I love working with that directors and actors and all this activity, and many hearing actors. It was their first time working with a deaf actor in their entire life, and they're like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so I felt a little bit like, you know. Like, um, I was like, okay, I was not superior to you guys. So there was one job, once we worked together, it was like, oh, you're like me. There's no difference between us. And I forgot my line. I'm like, I forgot my line too. So, you know, no problem. That's, uh, that's really nice to be able to expose people to the industry. So in the first time they're able to see a deaf actor with an interpreter and make everything accessible and they become very sensitive. So I'm very lucky to work on, um, with Castle Rock. And you know, Baby Driver, oh my gosh, that was huge. <laughs> wow. You know, um, like I was like walking on air on cloud nine <laughs> with all of this. I'm in a real Hollywood movie, you know? <laughs> so it's like, what? really drives me to do more is I know I was, will really make a big difference for um, in acting my entire life. So speaking of being a deaf actor, I'm curious how you're usually uh, approached to play a role. Is it as a deaf actor to play a deaf role or is it as an actor to play a role and you just happen to be deaf? Hmm, good question, good point. Um, Really, I've noticed that like a director like Edgar Weiss, he wrote um, uh, with a deaf black man who was 80 years old. That was what he had in his head when he wrote it. I am not that old yet. 
just to let you guys know. I'm half that age, okay? I'm around um, 35, so <laughs> this spring, okay? <laughs> so anyway, um, so he wrote in um, this role of mine, and I fit what his, his type was. So Castle Rock, that shows the same idea. So um, Stephen King... You know, he was the one who wrote, uh, well, he worked with the other writer and partnered with them, and they wanted a black deaf role, and hello, so that's how I got it. But thirdly, um, the door, you know, to the woods, we're looking for an actor, and any actor in general who happened to be deaf. So they needed to be deaf and know sign language and could speak some. So, you know, when I got cast for that purpose, and I was like, okay, I hope that one day, um, just, it doesn't need to be a deaf role, it just happens to be me, you know? And you could be flexible, it doesn't matter if you could speak or sign. You know, happen to be deaf, you know, to write a role that said, this is a deaf character, I'm like, that's a little tedious. I just wanna change that in this world. So along those lines, how have you felt included or excluded by the entertainment industry as a deaf person? Well, <laughs> this is a long story, but um, okay, I've been hitting my head against this wall for a long time now. So I know a few like um, um, Frasier, I was on that show, and that was great, and I showed up and did that, and it was a little bit awkward to do the CD, how do I do it? This is my first time doing it, to audition for a deaf role, and then found it was easy to work with me. And then they put me, you know, they put an interpreter next to me, and they're like, oh, Everything. This is so easy, and the show was a huge hit, and people loved that you know episode with me in it. And I got paid, and I keep getting residuals, so that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> so money. I'm a money person. I'm a money guy. How many of you guys? You know how many? I sell myself. So <laughs> I put myself in a box. So. Um, Really, I've been knocking my head against the wall for a long time. It's been frustrating. It's really hard to find a role for a black, deaf guy. It's hard to find a writer who really understands the culture and understands black culture, or understands how to sign and how to use sign language in whatever medium or whatever show that it, they need to get. So one day, I hope maybe more doors will open so I'm hoping this presentation here with 3 Play Media, this kind of workshop can help for all writers maybe out there to think about, to open their minds a little bit. So I'll be in the back ready for um, handing out my business cards after this. So. <laughs> um, so CJ, how, um, how do you shift the conversation from from really being about accommodating or portraying disabilities in entertainment to more about portraying differences and portraying the universal benefits of, of accessibility? Hmm. Um, to start with um, accessibility in the industry, it seems like people are becoming re familiar with the requirements. All right, they know they need to have an interpreter. So that they know. Um, also, they know that sometimes they ask me, um, do you prefer to have an interpreter? I'm like, oh yeah, I need to have so an interpreter. And so we'll look and interview lots of different ones to pick somebody that's right. Um, I'm very sensitive about uh, how people sign and where the framing is for the cinematographer. Like, there's different roles that I'll have. Like, you know, I'm an advocate for sign language. All right, for example, um, for Castle Rock, they had one night, I'm not supposed to tell you this, okay? I'm not telling you I signed a confidentiality agreement, just to let you know. But um, anyway, so anyways, it's possible to explain that one scene where I wanted to be speaking, they wanted me to use my voice and no sign language. And I said, okay, guys, stop. And as I told the director, I was like, you know, it was the lead in Cast Rock and was very sensitive, so I said, please stop. I was like, they asked me, CJ, how do you feel? Are you okay with this? And I was like, wow, he was aware. I'm really impressed. Okay. So um, I think the deaf community would be, why is CJ t um, talking? So because I know I was signed. Why did he sign? And then he stopped and he's the character speaking now. So we had the stopped in this discussion with the director and the director said, okay, 
let's talk to the producer. And he went about my so 15 minutes. They stopped everything on set. So they had these long discussions. And then I said, okay, we agree. And we went back to me signing. So I didn't have to use my voice for that. So I was like, oh, wow. They gave me respect. And that's where it starts, you know? I've not had a lot of that before, but, you know, they need to have this knowledge so it doesn't upset the show. So it's like, I hope that that answers a little bit what you're talking about. Like, that sensitivity is important. And how often do you feel like you do have to educate the people that you're working with about your experience? Oh, yeah. Oh, all the time. All the time. I'm just a walking... billboard it says educator across my chest <laughs> all the time it doesn't matter what oh please everywhere um like a, a director will be like um okay hold on I, and i'm like hold on director don't talk to me about my interpreter oh right 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 sorry sorry so then um from then on the director says hold on a second looks for the interpreter it says you come here and then can talk to me so it makes my life easier um, also, is ready when they say action with the you know the clapboards um, when they say action. So you know what's inside. So it's like all right. So give me a little bit. So inside something. So then I know that something you're ready to shoot. Okay. So so let's say I'm standing here. How do I know? And you say action if I can't see if it's behind my back. So if you're the director, say okay. I, I know what to do. I'm like ooh, it gives me goosebumps that he's sensitive, again, because he said, action, he cued me, and so, and then I'm able to just focus on my work as an actor and absorb my character, and so we find a way to make it work. So it's really great to see more like that instead of just people, you know, it's hard working with a deaf actor, you know, we don't want that sort of attitude. You know, I know how to make people feel good and make them laugh with me and all the crew and all the actors. I love meeting people and I teach them all signs for sign language. I teach them dirty signs too. (laughs) Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh wait, wait. You don't you didn't see that. <laughs> okay. And also um I become really friendly. I'm a warm guy and they see that I'm just a person. So uh, I'm just a person who happens to be deaf and black. So you have to really be able to go through them instead of, you know, I I'm approachable. So I, you can, you know, I don't you don't have to fight to have accessible. Just we work together hand to hand and we really become friends and we can warm because I'm open and they can learn from my culture and I let them know I'm happy to explain, you know, about my frustrations, my experiences. But often people say, I've never met a deaf person before in my life. So their eyes are wide open. So from then on, you know, they want to work with deaf people after working with me. So, and that opens the doors for more people like people in wheelchairs, blind actors, You know, so people become more sensitive through humor and through interactive communication. What is the biggest mistake that people make when they interact with someone who's deaf? Uh, Oh. Mm. No, wait, wait, wait. Slow up. Time down. Don't don't speak a mile a minute because, like, I can I can talk for myself and I can use my voice, but then when they start to. talk it's like they're like motor mouths I'm like time out uh I'm sorry I can speak but when you speak I can't really understand what you're saying you know you know so it's tough and so people you know either we it's like writing braille deaf people can't speak all these myths that people don't understand that I have to clear so the approach okay so I can let them know I can speak and I can sign you don't know sign language oh darn I'm sorry <laughs> I got, I'll help you out. <laughs> um, so you have a company, Sign World TV. How are you using that to help improve communication between deaf and hearing people? Oh, I am so happy to talk about this. All right, so my goal is to have a 24-7 channel to bring in both deaf and hearing workers to work together, to be able to share ideas, to be able to share um, uh, different things that we can do to grow their own businesses, and that's really my passion, That I, what I want to do. And I hope that um, my first um, horror film next year, 
I have, you know, the muscle to be able to do that. I have two big documentary films to a story that I'm looking forward to meeting with um, important people in the next few months. So I'm really excited to make that happen. And what is the best thing about being deaf? <laughs> oh, if I want to hear all the noise, I just take out my hearing aid. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> and it becomes peace of mind. You know, flushing the toilet, farts, <laughs> no problem. Airplanes going overhead. People are screaming at me and complaining behind me. Babies crying on flights, you know, on, the, on my flight. No problem. Take out my hearing aid. I feel so peaceful. It's deaf, peaceful to be a deaf person, period. You know, most people say, oh, you're deaf with a lot of pity. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I drive a Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? Come on. <laughs> Yeah, I, there's nothing to do with being deaf. It's nothing to do with that. It's who I am as a whole human being. It's my personality. It's my life. It's what I do for all the things I've done. You think that I, being deaf, I sit at home just twiddling my thumbs? No, I don't do that. So really, we open people's eyes to the many, many different kinds of people. So what are you working on right now, and why is it exciting to you? Working on right now? <laughs> hmm. Why should I tell you my secrets? <laughs> OK, anyways, right now I'm on tour. I'm touring a lot of events. The last f next five weeks, I'm flying all over the place. That's the most exciting thing that I'm doing right now in front of me. So I'm going to colleges, I'm going to high schools, giving speak, speeches and workshops, and I'm getting a, um, what's called a Breakthrough Award by the National Association for the Deaf, NAD, next month. So that's a nice honor I'm getting. Congratulations. So I'm getting the award. Thank you very much. If I get, once I get the award, then I'm going to stop and retire. Not a chance. I'm going to keep going until I am over 100 years old, and then I'm going to try to break the record, okay? I want to beat the George Burns record of <laughs> longevity. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. So as... So you're an actor, but you are also a writer, director, and producer. And I'm curious how you consider, in those mediums, the visibility of deafness in your work. Um, visibility as a deaf person? Um, I want people to just look at me like anybody else. You know, I'm an ordinary person. You know, I have passion. I'm motivated. I work with someone. I, want, I make things happen. You know, I don't like separation. I believe that all colors can really work together. I believe that all disabilities work together. We're all one. And I believe that writers, you know, writer help me grow, and also I help them grow. So that's the bottom line of what's a passion. It gives me passion, and I give you success. How do you think that your recent role in Baby Driver has helped to like, improve the societal perception of deafness? Um, I have to say um, it's signless, you know, it's speechless. I, I say signless, it says speechless, okay? <laughs> so signless means, um, so when um, Baby Driver came out, and I, when I didn't realize how big of um, what a blockbuster film that was, so I was involved in the film, and I was just completely overwhelmed. I had red carpet for the premiere, and people were screaming, CJ, CJ, and I, I'm deaf, I didn't hear that, so they had to tap me, and I had to point and wave. So I'm like, sorry, I forgot I'm deaf. Uh, hey, let me turn my hearing ear out. Okay, my hearing aid's on now. So... 
it's like I was overwhelming, but it's still, you know, I could breathe and more offers started coming in. And so I couldn't really believe that all these things that lined up for me. So it was a huge honor to be in um, Edgar's movie, you know, and the fast track. Like, you know, Jamie Foxx? Yeah. Well, I got to meet him, and there were rumors about him, you know, that he was making fun of deaf people when he was signing. All right, let me, let me put a stop to those rumors, okay? You know, um, I need to protect him for this because, you know, he was just having fun on, you know, on the, um, thank you, Jimmy Fallon show. So I was like, he wasn't doing anything. He was just having fun, you know? It, it was, that was the point. But he came and said, CJ... I want to learn sign language, so um, so to be able to work together. So we became good friends, and and you know he never had a deaf friend before in his life. So really, so I don't care about his celebrity. <laughs> so I just want um, I just want a good human being and a good connection and to feel good. Also, second thing is um, Lily Tomlin. Whoa, she was so wonderful. She came up to me and she said, I would love to work with you. I was like, wow. You know, we weren't ever in the same scene together, but I was really inspired and realized that all of them, you know, had respect for my performance level, that we were all in the same. And that was really a big breakthrough moment that it made it all the industry were able to see, wow, you picked a deaf person over a hearing person to play a deaf role. You know that um, Edgar, the director, had an interview with me. Well, really when we auditioned and the first time we met, um, he held back. He just wanted to see, first he auditioned all these hearing actors, one after another, and then he realized, this wasn't right. I'm not really comfortable doing this. And then they picked me, a deaf person for a deaf role, and it was a huge hit. And then people really gave props for that. Number two, the captions, when I was signing, they put the captions up. That was his idea, to put the captions on screen. Number three, uh, the feel of the music, I came up with that where my character put the hand on the speaker. It was connected to the end where the character, um, when Baby would put the hand on the speaker, so, and he became deaf, so it was like this whole thing, the sensitivity for the creativity and inclusion that made the story really powerful. That sensitivity helped my performance and we carried that through from beginning to the end. So it was really brilliant what he was doing instead of like, oh, let me just go through all the different actors. No, the authenticity has power. Definitely does. Um, so there are a lot of people in the room who work with media. They, they're producers, publishers, content distributors. Um, and I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about any advice you might have for getting them to get buy-in for accessibility in their work. Yeah, you, you know more about this than I do. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, come on. Um, I'm not really involved in this industry. But um, anyways, I would pick someone like you. Can please help me out here? Rich, no, you are knowledgeable about this kind of work, in, you know, in L.A. and accessibility rights about deaf and everything. Please, I'm, that's, I, I'm, not, I'm just an actor. Well, let me shift that around then and instead ask what you want people producing media to know about the deaf community and how to portray them. How to portray deaf people in general and with different skills um, than deaf people have because uh, we're producing, um, uh, like one, we have a producer here, you know, he's made production, he's done a $5 million project right here. He's, he's running a company, you know, and he works with hearing producers. And so here he's working, you know, in all of California and national plus all over the country that he's running an accessibility program for hearing depends on his knowledge. So really it's important to be able to expose someone like, you know, to a deaf, a lot of people know that deaf people have professional knowledge to be able to control, you know, not just to spoon people, but 
have skills that industry's looking for. I am an actor and I have knowledge like how to make things accessible in films and TV and on stage and how to use interpreters, how to make people comfortable, how to make hearing actors, you know, learn sign or you know be able to fit in different situations that's my expertise you know and if i don't know an area i'll pick someone who knows more than i do you know either one of these gentlemen sitting here today well cj thank you so much i think we have a little bit of time for a couple of audience questions and i know that people have lots yes, of them. please i love questions <laughs> please please bring them on i uh, shoot me <laughs> I had a question about what kind of content you're thinking about for a 24-7 channel. Is it particularly for the hard of hearing? Oh, in general, deaf, hard of hearing, hearing people, everyone. It's all sign language and we're bringing on voiceover and caption. So all three together, um, it'll be open with that. Um, that means um, leading role would be nice to have a deaf leading role, and we would put a hearing person with them to work together. So that's my dream. Um, have a writer who's familiar with deaf culture, or if they don't know, they're willing to learn, I'm cool with that. So because we have to make it the first, you know, sign run um, program, be able to have um, short different scenarios to be able to grow, to be able to have short films and feature films, and then... Um, major movies, you know, that'll be down the road. So really start small and build up and grow so that we have, you know, we'll have kids programming all the way to adult programming, all the way to, you know, documentary films or talk shows, different types of short films. My focus is more on, um, you know, sitcom and film. How did you feel <clears throat> when Netflix came out with their streaming service and the cap closed captioning was not available, but it was available through the DVD service? Hmm. That was pretty frustrating, of course. Because um, my, my favorite show's on and I was ready to watch it and there's no captioning. I'm like, oh, wait, 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 something is wrong with my captioning device. And I'm clicking around and I've, I gave up and I was, you know, I said, hey, Netflix, where's the caption? My caption's not working. Please fix it. So then um, long, that was a long time ago. You know, there was like, there was only a few things. Now there's a lot of accessibility. So Netflix really has improved so much. And so I give them a round of applause for that. Like airplanes now on the flight, they have a lot, um, you know, 250, I have a lot of frequent flyer miles, 250,000 frequent flyer miles. So captions are not often available. There's nothing there. So I won't only want to watch what foreign films. So I found really great foreign films, <laughs> really good movies. Nothing wrong with that. I was like, wow, <laughs> Japanese and Korean movies. Oh my God, these are good movies. <laughs> Better than American movies. Wait, wait, I'm sorry, Americans. I'm sorry, no offense here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's good. Thank you. Whoops. Speaking of, of how... <laughs> check, check. Wait, wait, next thing my pants are going to fall down. <laughs> I have a silly question. I, I'm not in the film industry, but it's my understanding that mm -hmm. to get a Screen Actors Guild card, you need a speaking role, and I'm wondering if you were able to get that without having a speaking role. Oh, you mean with a non-speaking role? Oh, yeah. That's no problem. No problem. Okay. No, it doesn't, a speaking role doesn't mean, it doesn't mean, you know, it can be either signed or, um, Right, it doesn't, or no sign, that's you great know, to hear. that's fine. It's never really happened. So most of the time they look for someone who can sign or someone who can speak a little bit. It's like a hard of hearing person, you know, but most in the industry they pick someone who can sign over someone who's just hard of hearing. So like, all right, let me, let me talk about something that, um, um, oh, Door in the Woods. Um, that was a horror movie, and so they, I was at, a, was at a film festival, and one of the lead characters had to sign and speak at the same time, which is like doing this. 
So I was like, oh, no, that's tough. That is a huge challenge. So um, I can speak clearly, and I can do that, but it makes me a little nervous about whether people can understand people. Oh, yeah, we can understand you, CJ, but still, you know, it's like, oh, I could be as well speaking Russian as I'm signing, but, you know, still it was successful. So... I know the deaf community, no, they hate seeing that. You can't sign and speak at the same time. That's just um, something you shouldn't do. And, but it's a challenge, so I want the opportunity. So I want the opportunities to work. So that's my passion. I want to work, period. Um, I did um, Don Sign Press. Um, that's an educational publishing sign language company. Um, they hired me to do, you know, through an agency, and they said, hey, you can't work for Don Sign Press because um, I'm a SAG actor, professional actor, and Don Sign Press said, we're non-union, and they said, oh, but, you know, we haven't had work for 15 years. I've been waiting here for a SAG role, you know, twiddling my thumbs. So it's like, I just want to work. I produce, direct, write, to be involved in acting. So we went ahead, and the agent fired me because I did non-union role. I said, I don't care. You know, they said, blah, blah. SAG gave me, you know, a black eye on that. And I was like, I don't care. You know, SAG, I was like, you know, you have not found me work. So it's like, you've done nothing for me. I found work on my own, and I can make it, you know, my own break, and I need to earn my money. So for two years later, nothing happened from sex. So I got lucky, so I'm glad, happy, I'm glad the opportunity any way I can. You got to grab it and seize the day. So it doesn't matter what. You know, if you see something, grab it, and I make my dream come true. I think we have time for one more question, if anyone has... Two more. I'm two happy more. to answer okay. two more. <laughs> two more. Ah, oh, let's see. You know, I've traveled all over America, and one of my messages I always tell people is be who you are. Dream big. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do something. You happen to be deaf or black, so what? So I happen to be black, so what? Yes, you can do, yes, you'll encounter frustrations, and people will look down on you, and, but don't worry about that. Don't worry. You try to do, you do a different approach, but you focus and use your passion to really develop your dreams. So that's how I got successful. If I became a success, you can do it too. So always use that message whenever I tour. That's one of my, um, one of my ways to give back to the community. I love giving back to everyone everywhere I go. How often do you find that other deaf people are disempowered in, in something like the entertainment industry? Hmm. It's been a long history of disempowerment because, um, you know, we've been waiting for um, roles, but really they don't come up very often, even though we've been waiting. I waited for five years, and finally I break through with a deaf role, and all the deaf community flooded in like cattle. <laughs> and they cried out, wait, oh, just one deaf role? Mm. But so, you know, that people were like, oh, so many, you know, I competed against all these other actors. It was a little depressing, so, but that's normal. So, you know, they have to realize that they have to make things themselves. They can't just sit at home waiting for auditions to show up. They have got to take the initiative, and I try to, um, you, to encourage people to empower themselves, okay? Take your power back, empower yourself, grow, and then you empower other people so everyone can grow and become, everyone can work and support each other, and we grow, and we make produce a film, Whatever, you know, just keep in mind. So you don't just wait for one role because that's not going to happen. So take your power back. 
So you have to build the road yourselves. So, you know, lay that track so your train can run smoothly and be a success. So you could be, you know, Tom, you know, like the tunnel, you've got to just, you know, it's like, come on, tunnel. So it's like, no, <laughs> you'll be able to emerge to the other side. You just keep going. Don't cry and say, I'll never be a success. I want to stop. But, you know, just, just realize, just know it's over there. Don't miss the boat. Just keep on going. So go as far as you can go. Go as far, and you keep going towards that light until it comes, and home sweet home. That's my favorite flavor. <laughs> Thank you. CJ, thank you so much for being here. It's been a really incredible experience, and I'm so uh, so impressed and and honored to be able to speak with you. Thank you. Pressure. <laughs>